السلام عليكم اوكي ذس وات از ذس tension this is tension no motor x why tension no motor x because you can see air here this is hyperlucency hyperlucency the 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 mediastinum is push is herniated into the right side yeah and this is a chest drain you can see this is the upper lobe this is the middle lobe of the right lung okay and as you can see this is the et tube this is a picc eh? long line this is the ng tube so if if this sort of x ray comes in comes in your exam you need to mention so you what you can see you can see a eh? hyperlucency area in the right lung field with herniation into the right uh, into the left mediastinum it pushes the uh, pushes the mediastinum towards the left eh? you can see the trachea everything is deviated to the left so it pushes uh, to the left and then you can see a chest drain you can see et tube inside too you can see long line you can see and g tube so these are the things that you need to you need to mention okay uh, this case as i may, i told you this case has come out in your, in in one of your colleagues exam recently and it may come up again and even before that this same picture because this is a very good picture from it's not from google lah it's in the radiopedia it's a very good uh, website for learning radiology it's a very good resource uh, so it's it's available for to be used so that's why we use this what is this what is this transient they keep me in new point uh, so yeah this is ttn so basically this is almost normal 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 picture but you can see there's very high last trickiness eh? very high low opacity very less trickiness there and then you can see some fluid in the fissure it's not that clear but sometimes you may see much more clearer fluid in the, in the fissure <clears throat> what is this normal normal chest x-ray with the uh, thymic tails thymic cell sign so thymic cell so this is the normal chest x-ray with normal thymic cell sign eh? so this is the this is the thymus this is the normal thymus sometimes it gets bigger sometimes it may be smaller sometimes you can see on the left side as well so this is the normal thymus so do you need to be worry do you need to worry about this no no no, no, no need worry. you should just ignore this okay all right what is this <coughs> boot shape heart boot shape heart so typical in typical in, typical in qf so why why this happen is because the right ventricle is at the interior left ventricle is on the on the uh, on the anterior or more uh, entro uh, left entro lateral so that's why if left ventricular hypertrophy you see cardiomegaly but right ventricular hypertrophy you see boot shape heart <clears throat> so and in this sort of film with with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, pulmonary stenosis you will see oligo you will, what will see you will see uh, you will, so no you you will see uh, you won't see that much uh, that much fluid uh, in the lungs okay all right what is this what is this features of uh, rds reflected reticular nodular changes yep so this is um, reticular nodular changes for uh, ground glass rds uh, ground glass appearance so what you see here is actually diffuse granular opacities the diffuse granular opacities which is described as ground glass eh? and it is usually uh, symmetrical you can see some air bronchograms there you can see some air bronchograms there can you see oh i forgot to i i'm supposed to actually share this slide with you hmm. forgot next time remind me okay fine and then okay all right what is this this is another this extreme, this, this, no, not the same patient lah, but this is rds as well eh? what is this 
left congenital left congenital diaphragmatic hernia so these are bowel sometimes they may be even liver inside there but usually on the right side so left side liver tak ada okay all right what is this pneumonia so esophage uh, tracheoesophageal fistula esophageal atresia uh, so esophageal atresia with tracheoesophageal fistula so why why i say is esophageal atresia because the rice tube is reverse here see it doesn't go down so rice tube should go inside the stomach but if you pass the rice tube it u turns there so this is a esophageal atresia why i say there is tracheoesophageal fistula because there are gas in the stomach so without without tracheoesophageal fistula so apa maksud tracheoesophageal fistula maknanya trachea huh? esophagus here it stops there dia ada blunt ended esophagus trachea it connects down but down there there is another connection to another part of the of the esophagus so sebab tu air from the trachea gets into the gets into the stomach as well that's why we can see gas pattern there so this is tracheoesophageal fistula but with esophageal atresia sorry uh, dr can i ask mm, yes uh, if without the presence of the rice tube can we know whether it is uh, tracheal uh, trans tracheal fistula or not eh? no no huh? that is why that is why in newborns if you do if you do chest x-ray in newborns you should put a rice tube in mm. Mm. so and then sometimes uh, you know in patients with uh, for example patients with uh, uh, whose mother has a polyhydramnios so you know esophageal atresia one of the causes for polyhydramnios in mothers are esophageal atresia so in mothers with polyhydramnios you need to do a chest x-ray but you need to put the rice tube in it is very difficult so sometimes if you miss Usually, esophageal atresia, you don't usually miss lah. Because if you miss, how can the baby fit? Yeah, the esophagus, they're not connected, so you, the baby cannot fit. So, but sometimes you may miss this H-type uh, uh, tracheal esophageal fistula. H-type one, yeah. The esophagus is continuous, the trachea is continuous, but there is a connection, much like H, letter of H, yeah. Kan? Connection between trachea and also the esophagus. So this is H-type in tracheal esophageal fistula. So sometimes you may miss. So what happens is they can jadi banyak the child will always get this aspiration, micro aspiration, come with aspiration pneumonia and all those things. So this is because tracheoesophageal fistula. Okay, clear. What is this? This is pneumonia lah. Eh? This side okay. Uh, consolidation. Remember, if you comment on X-ray, you need to always comment about the about the uh, the tubes and everything. Okay. All right. Next, this is the video that we've seen last week. I'm not gonna show this again. Oh, do you wanna see again? Let's see. So, the big one. So can you appreciate the sound? So the sound is when the baby closes uh, his vocal his vocal cord and they close vocal cord. Lepas tu dia tegar, then they push, they increase intra intra intrathoracic pressure. <coughs> so what happens is the baby is trying to open up his airway, open up his uh, 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 alveolar and things. So this is grunting. So grunting is a sign of respiratory distress. And this is just to show. Just to show this recession, eh? subcostal and some intercostal recession as well. You can hear some grunting as well. Eh? Maybe to bunyi. Uh, uh, uh. So that is grunting as well. 
Okay, so let's go to respiratory diseases of newborn. Okay, we've seen some several of the uh, common uh, main respiratory diseases of newborn. Newborn actually is not that difficult. Neonates is quite it's not that difficult because the diagnosis is not it's not that many. Yeah, usually, uh, well, there are lots of diagnoses, but then the common diagnosis, the common diseases that we see in neonates are not that not that many. So in terms of respiratory disease of newborn. Usually the cases that we see are those that I've discussed before, usually TTN, congenital pneumonia, RPS, uh, and, and those that we've discussed before. Okay, so these are the objectives. Uh, yep, okay. So just to recap, so you need to remember when you, when you look at neonates, you need to always look at the fetal lung development. So fetal lung development, by week four, usually the laryngotracheal groove forms from the floor of the foregut, and then by week five, the left and right lung buds push into the pericardio-peritoneal canals, where there's primordial of the uh, pleural cavity. And by week six, there's descent of the heart and lungs into the thorax, and then uh, the uh, pleuroperitoneal foramen starts to close. This is by week six. <coughs> by week five, you can see there's the growth is being formed. And by week six, it starts to descend into the intra, intra thoracic cavity. And then by week seven, the lung buds divide into secondary and tertiary bronchi. By week 24, the bronchi divide 14 more times and the respiratory bronchioles starts to develop. And by birth, there will be an additional seven divisions of bronchi. When does the uh, fetal lung complete development? A, a, a human? When does fetal lung complete development? 13, 13 years of age. Yes, up to 13 years of age yeah, because it takes time. Yeah? Sometimes our lung, before 13 years, is not fully developed yet. So that is why this is an ongoing ongoing process. Okay. Fetal lung histology, so stage one, uh, by five to 17 weeks, there's a pseudoglandular period where all the major elements of the lungs have formed, except for those involved in gaseous exchange, so only after 17 weeks where we have the start the uh, development of the uh, gaseous uh, the lung cells where gaseous exchange occurs. Stage 2, the canalicular period between 16 to 25 weeks where bronchi and terminal bronchioles increase in lumen size and the lung become vascularized. So this is when the uh, tissues that are involved in gaseous exchange starts to, starts to develop. Stage 3 where the terminal set period from 24 weeks onward so more terminal sac develop and interface with capillaries line with type 1 alveolar cells or pneumocytes. So also type 2 pneumocytes, where type 2 is the one that secretes the surfactant. So this all starts usually between, it starts from 24 weeks, 24 weeks onward. So that is why, do you know, if, if, if a mother come in with, with, okay, if you have a premature, how to say? Okay, so if you have a pregnant lady come into your come into the delivery room, uh, do you know what is the age for 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 uh, what to say? What's the term? Uh, uh, survival survival age. So at which age do we actually attend resuscitate baby and things? Which age? So if a mother, if a mother come in, comes in at 27 weeks, do you think sh should we resuscitate the baby? Uh, I don't think so because alveolar does not develop yet at this at the age. 27 weeks. Yeah. Okay. Who who says we should resuscitate? Oh, everyone agrees with Fitria. 24 weeks, doctor, is the cutoff since the elaboration of surfactant starts there. So, Aklan thinks it's 24 weeks. You think it's 24 weeks? Anyone else? <coughs> okay, so basically, it depends on the center, it depends on the country, it depends on the, on the, on, uh, on the general, uh, also depends on the locality of the hospital as well. So, the point I'm saying is, if you take, for example, hospital HRPZ, Hospital Raja Perpuan Zainab II, Kota Baru. So they take 27 weeks. Their cut-off point is 27 weeks in 800 grams. If the child is more than 27 weeks, 
and more than 800 grams only they will resuscitate. All less than that will be considered as either abortion or considered as early neonatal death. Those babies won't survive. If you look at if you look at UK, so UK takes 24 weeks. So UK takes 24 weeks. So those born 24 weeks and above, 24 plus zero and above, they will resuscitate. Those 23 to 24 weeks, they will discuss. They will discuss with mother. If mother wants to resuscitate, they want to go more. Mother understands the associated complication. Then 23 to 24 weeks, they will assess the baby at birth. If the baby shows some signs of life, they will try to resuscitate, but not full resuscitation. Tak ada chest compression, there will be no drugs. Uh, uh, tak ada bagi adrenaline, tak ada bagi atropine, tak ada bagi semua-semua tu. Uh, dia cuma resuscitate, itu bed macam tu, tengok macam mana. Tapi kalau baby doesn't show any signs of life, they will not resuscitate. The 23 to 24 weeks. But now UK, before I came back, I think uh, late last year, UK starts to discuss about 22 to 23 weeks. If you look at other countries such as Canada or Japan, so Canada and Japan and some other Nordic countries, they are more advanced a bit because of their numbers and their system. So they, they, they have already been resuscitating 22 weeks and above. So their cutoff point is 22 weeks. Okay, I said about his, uh, Canada, UK, I've said about Japan. How about Malaysia? Malaysia, I've only mentioned Hospital Raja Perempuan Zainab Kota Baru, which takes 27 weeks and 800 grams weight of the baby. How about generally in Malaysia? So generally in Malaysia, if you look at the if you look at the uh, uh, PSM punya paper, or generally in Malaysia we take twenty five weeks. Generally in Malaysia we resuscitated babies more than twenty five weeks and five hundred grams. Those less than so in Malaysia our cutoff point is twenty five weeks and five hundred grams. So babies less than five hundred grams we do not resuscitate. We allow for comfort care. So baby will die, but baby will die with comfort. So 25 weeks and 500 grams in Malaysia. 24 to 25, we do like UK, we do by discussion. So we discuss with mother, we tell the mother what are the complications of having extreme premature babies, and we see how things go. If the baby do doesn't show any signs of life, mata pun tak buka lagi eh mata opening of the eyes is actually good parameter of 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 maturity eh kalau mata pun tak boleh buka lagi so it shows that baby is extremely premature lots of bruises in the body so baby is extremely premature so those less than 25 week we don't resuscitate but 24 to 25 week in Malaysia it depends on discussion it depends on the baby's general condition kenapa kita ada plus minus one or two weeks because sometimes you know dating scan dating scan may may not be correct. Sometimes they are plus one, one or two weeks, plus minus. So, but sometimes kalau kita 25 weeks, sometimes the baby is actually maybe uh, a bit more or a bit less than that. Faham? Clear? Okay, so in Malaysia, sama juga dengan, dengan uh, UIA. UIA, we, we were thinking, so at which age should we come and resuscitate babies? So, we, we were keen to take for 24 weeks as per, as per uh, global, uh, worldwide, apa semua, 24 weeks because 24 weeks is when your terminal sac starts to develop, your your alveolar cell, uh, alveolar cell starts to develop, where your pneumocytes, usually type 2 pneumocytes starts to secrete surfactant 24 weeks. So we prefer to take 24 weeks, but then the issue is other hospitals in Malaysia, they take 25 weeks. So then we decided to go according to the national guideline, which is still 25 weeks and 500 grams. <clears throat> okay, clear. So stage four is, is uh, the late fetal period where alveolar is the alveolar period where 95% of mature alveolar starts to develop. Uh, 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 alveolar starts to develop, but 95% of mature alveolar develop after birth. Eh? A newborn has only one sixth to one eighth of the adult number of alveolar. So this will continue to develop until your uh, 13 years of age. That is why things like smoking and things is very problematic for, for children. Eh? Mm. Okay, uh, we've mentioned before uh, respiratory distress at birth. If a child is born and we noted that the child has respiratory distress, so they, it, it can be respiratory cause and it can be non-respiratory cause. What are the non-respiratory causes of a child being distressed? So a baby can be hypothermic uh, because 
you know newborn babies they have uh, comparatively uh, larger body surface area it's not that their body surface is bigger than adults but comparatively they have larger uh, body surface area so there's more areas for heat loss so they can go to uh, hypothermia and hypothermia itself can cause baby to be in respiratory distress and furthermore they are born with lots of vernix they are born with lots of fluid on their body ada banyak air dalam dekat kulit dia so what happens this fluids what happens with the fluids the fluids will evaporate so this process of evaporation from water on the skin changes to vapor this process of water changing to vapor actually what what is the product the product is loss of heat so the product is loss of loss of heat so more hypothermia can happen this is the same thing like uh, you doing uh, apa nama tu tepid sponging so tepid sponging is not that you put water bukan you celup air bukan celup budak tu dalam air ataupun jelun budak tu dalam air ataupun you letak air basah lencun no the the concept of tepid sponging is you put some drops of water on the skin and then when the water evaporates water changes from liquid changes to vapor this process this process this biochemical process causes the body to lose heat so this is the this is the mechanism also hyperthermia as well hyperthermia can also cause a baby to be attacked in the end seems to be in respiratory distress hypovolemia of course why hypovolemia can cause respiratory distress because of the uh, increase uh, the stimulation of the cardiorespiratory center and causing the child to be to be tachypneic as well uh, hypotension wrong spelling there hypoglycemia as well can cause child to be uh, to be tachypneic anemia as well can cause child to be tachypneic and uh, polycythemia okay uh, the other problem that we can see as mentioned before is transient tachypnea of newborn uh, surfactant deficiency which is rds or the other term is highland membrane disease eh? and also meconium aspiration syndrome pneumonia sepsis and also pneumothorax and other sort of air leaks like pneumothorax uh, uh, what else uh, uh, the pneumomedastinum so all these are uh, air, air leaks eh? so respiratory causes it can be congenital abnormalities of the lung congenital heart disease deformity congenital deformity hernia CCAM, eh? congenital cystic adenomat adenomat malformation where there's lots of cysts in the lungs. It can be tracheal abnormalities, tracheal esophageal fistula, uh, esophageal atresia, or it can be pulmonary hypoplasia where the lung is not really formed well. So the problem with pulmonary hypoplasia is it will be very difficult to very difficult to manage because the lungs are not well formed. So if the lungs are not well formed. It's very difficult the child will have chronic lung disease very difficult to very difficult to manage and pulmonary hypoplasia sometimes upper symptom there so those those patient presenting with um, oligohydramnios so those patient those baby, those mother who has oligohydramnios one of the problem that we should always think of is pulmonary hypoplasia and then uh, PPHN, PPHN, pulmonary hemorrhage are among the other uh, problem. What is persistent pulmonary hypertension of newborn? <coughs> what is PPHN? Anyone can suggest? Uh, uh, can I try, Doctor? Yes. Uh, is it is like a pers can um during fetal during fetal punya period there is a high hypertension in the pulmonary but um, as you, you are born it's supposed to go down but due to some causes such as hypoxemia or uh, acidosis it can cause the uh, vasculature to maintain to be persist, um, to be hypertensive so. Okay, so, <coughs> so basically in fetal life when the baby is inside mother's uterus so what happens is they don't use the lung and the lung is filled by fluids the lung is filled by fluids the lung is filled by fluids there's compression on the blood vessels which causes the compression on the cell tissues isn't it so this compression causes increase in the in the 
pulmonary pulmonary pressure and you know what is connected to the baby is the placenta and placenta is a is a very low uh, uh, is a low pressure punya uh, circulation so placenta reduces the total uh, total uh, venous uh, resistance so placenta presence of placenta when your blood is connect when your vessel is connected to the placenta it reduces the total pulmonary venous resistance uh, total peripheral venous resistance by connecting it to the placenta so it reduces the total systemic blood pressure so systemic blood pressure is lower as compared to pulmonary blood pressure so what happens is blood is shifted shunted from going into the lung because there's high blood pressure it, it doesn't go into the lung it goes into the system circulation via there's two two shunts isn't it where are the shunts i i, I thought i i, I did the uh, discussion with you yeah uh, yes, that's good. yeah yes. just just uh, this before we were quarantined uh, yeah. yes. uh, and that's atrosis yes doctors atrosis and for a moment of valley. For a moment of valley. So they shunt through the in in interatrial, which is the for a moment of valley, and also uh, between the aorta and also the pulmonary artery, which is the ductus arteriosus. So these are the two shunts. So what happens when the child cries? When the child is being born, first there are several mechanisms. First is compression of the chest. Then, masa dia nak keluar kan? Kalau dia keluar through vaginal delivery, compression of the chest causes the body pushes out fluid from the lung it goes outside so that's one thing that is why if a child is born by cesarean section that there is higher risk of uh, ttn why because there's not the, the the fluid is not excreted out by the compression of the of the chest that's one thing second apa apa lagi tadi the, the child starts to cry kan dia nangis yes yes bila dia cry apa expansion yes. of the chest so expansion of the chest you reduce the intrathoracic pressure what happens satu you expand kan bila you reduce intrathoracic pressure what happens what happens the fluid will start to be absorbed into the lymphatics the fluid will start to be absorbed into the lymphatic because of the increase uh, uh, reduce in the intrathoracic pressure kan you expand the lung reduce intrathoracic pressure fluid absorbed into the into the uh, into the lymphatics okay and then what happened they start air start masuk dalam airway air from outside with oxygen start masuk dalam airway start masuk into your alveola what happens your pao2 will increase pao2 is a good oxygen is a good vasodilator oxygen is a good vasodilator but oxygen as well oxygen x as well so oxygen akan bila dia basuh dah later dia akan bila dia basuh dah late what happens reduce pulmonary blood pressure also apa oxygen as well will act on the ductus arteriosus as well so oxygen will cause the ductus arteriosus to close oxygen will cause the ductus arteriosus to close so net effect is and then kita cut pula placenta bila kita cut placenta you will lose the very low pressure punya circulation uh, serial circulation kan you belajar elektrik kan macam mana kalau serial dengan <coughs> apa nama circulation kan so low very very apa uh, low pressure punya low resistance ultra low resistance punya circulation placenta ni bila you buang what happens you automatically you increase the total resistance total peripheral uh, systemic resistance ni is uh increase because you lose this this uh this placenta of circulation uh, so what happens your pulmonary blood pressure will reduce your systemic blood pressure will increase so that is why you sebab tu blood daripada heart dia pump into your lungs di dekat saja they don't need very high blood pressure kan and then your lung is small but your body is big so left ventricle needs to pump strong into the whole body kan so kalau pulmonary pressure is high so it will be difficult that's why you have right ventricular 
failure, right sided heart failure. Okay, so pulmonary persistent pulmonary hypertension of newborn ni, it can be idiopathic, it can be it can be uh, it can be because of meconium aspiration, it can be because of pulmonary hypoplasia, it can be because of so many so many other problems. So, but this is very difficult because why? Because your if your right sided uh, uh, if your pulmonary pressure is high, there will be shunting uh, right to left shunt. So usually Kalau ada VSD, VSD, ventricular septal defect, the shunt is left to right ke right to left? Left to right. Left to right. The, the shunt will be left to right. Kenapa left to right? Because of pressure gradient. So pressure gradient in the left side, systemic side is always higher than the right side. That's left to right. Kalau VSD, they jadi right to left. What is the problem with that? Fitria? Kalau VSD, if you have a child with VSD, lepas tu you buat scan, you nampak dia punya shunting tu right to left. What is that? I think uh, it's uh, dah jadi isomengal syndrome. Yes, very true. Bagus. So, if you have VSD and then you have right to left shunt, so there is isomengal. Isomengal is a irreversible pulmonary hypertension. So, dia jadi right to left shunt. Bila right to left shunt, this is where you will see cyanosis. This is where you will see cyanosis. Because blood uh, right to, dia tak sempat lagi nak di oxygenated. So, this is why you have cyanosis. Okay. Alright. So, like that, babies with persistent pulmonary hypertension of newborn, you will see <coughs> That they are sinus. Okay, I have one more thing to ask. Okay, siapa boleh jawab? Eh? If you if you suspect the child to have persistent pulmonary hypertension of newborn, there is one bedside test that you can do, bedside assessment that you can do to know that, okay, oh, this is the PHN. This is pulmonary hypertension of newborn. What can you do? A bedside assessment. Hyperoxia test, doctor. Hyperoxia test. Okay, macam mana? How do you do hyperoxia test? We give by that this one uh, to differentiate uh, failure whether it's pulmonary cause or cardiac cause. No, hyperoxia yeah. test. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Uh, teruskan, teruskan. I'll tell you why why you are wrong lah. <laughs> uh, we give um hundred percent oxygen for ten to uh, for for ten minutes. And then we expect um, we expect improvement if it's a pulmonary cause where it is supposed to be more than uh, I think 60 PaO2 and SpO2 improved by I'm not sure about the numbers and um, okay. vice versa. Okay, hyperoxic test is used to differentiate between pulmonary causes of cyanosis or, or poor oxygen, poor, poor saturation to differentiate between uh, between pulmonary cause and cardiac uh, and cardiac cause, so basically like con cyanotic congenital heart disease. So if the child is being persistent, the saturation is not that good. So you're not sure is it pulmonary or is it cardiac cause. So you do hypoxic test. So because if you do hypoxic test, if the problem is actually cardiac cause, like uh, TOF or or other cyanotic congenital heart disease, even if you give 100% oxygen, the saturation, the PaO2 will still remain. Low. But if the problem is lung, if the problem is lung, when you give 100% oxygen, the SpO2 will improve. The PaO2 will improve. So this is to, to differentiate between pulmonary cause and also cyanotic congenital heart disease cause. Not for PPHN. Because in PPHN, sometimes even if you give 100% oxygen, they will increase. Okay. What else can we do? There's a simple bedside assessment, bedside test that you can do to to show you that this is actually probably the case. I think it's about blood pressure measurement. Uh, nope. Yeah, to <laughs> blood pressure measurement, 4 limb BP is useful for uh, coarctation of aorta. So coarctation of aorta, so about the coarct to the aorta, so you will see blood pressure in the lower limb will be lower than blood pressure in the upper limbs. So about the coarct is sempit. So upper limb, so below the coarctation to upper limb blood pressure will be 
high tapi lower sebab dah ada koak dia sempit so blood pressure in lower limbs will be low okay it's something to do with spo2 abg doktor abg tak berkaitan dengan spo2 spo2 so what happens is you compare between Okay, I'm giving a clue. I'm, I still want you to think. And pre-ductal. Ah, pre-ductal and post-ductal SPO2. You will see difference between pre-ductal and post-ductal SPO2. Kenapa ya? Hmm, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so look at look at the issues. Uh, satu, okay. The, okay. So, kalau pre-ductal ni mana pre-ductal? Where, where is pre-ductal? Before the Before the duck lah okay. uh, So before the duck ni mana? Where? Arch of Ayata eh. Yes, yes dekat Arch of Ayata tu kat situ But where? Radial artery huh? Radial artery Okay yes, radial artery Yes, yes, yes but which side? Right side right. So it's right, right upper limb So right upper limb is pre-ductal Right upper limb is pre-ductal. Left upper limb and lower limbs are all post-ductal. Sebab the supply is before the before the duct. Sama juga bukan setakat right upper limb. Look at your ears, apa semua ni kan. They before the before the duct. So these are all pre-ductal. Left upper limb and semua bahagian-bahagian lain, those are post-ductal. So kenapa duct is important? Because the increase in pressure is in there pulmonary increase pulmonary blood pressure systemic blood pressure naik juga tapi pulmonary blood pressure ni naik dan dia persistently high so what happens is right to left shunt in this sort of patient i told you before in in newborn babies the ductus arteriosus takes minimum of 5 to 7 days to close in premature babies extreme premature babies they take longer to close in some baby they don't close Kan? So, bila duct is still open, what happens? Bila ada, bila ada right, bila ada pulmonary, pulmonary hypertension, there will be right to left shunt across the, across the, across the duct lah, across the duct. Kan? So, this deoxygenated blood from the pulmonary artery, belum sampai lung lagi, from the pulmonary artery goes, from the pulmonary artery goes through the duct into the aorta. Nampak? So, sebab itu, if you see, post-ductal akan jadi lebih low dia punya SPO2. Kan? Yang pre-ductal, pre-ductal okey lah sebab ni dia tak dapat yang deoxygenated blood tu. Dia dapat blood yang dah oxygenated, high oxygenated blood. It's good kalau I can draw. Tak boleh draw lah. Hmm. I need to buy something yang buat boleh draw. Hmm. Zoom boleh tak? Ah, zoom boleh draw. Susah nak draw dengan jari. Macam mana ya? Boleh draw. Annotate. Kalau draw on powerpoint boleh? Buat share baru ah, Tak apalah, next time lah <laughs> uh, I think it's good kalau kita boleh buat session about uh, Understanding pathophysiology of of of, of cardiac problems uh, Pathophysiology of uh, some of the respiratory problems How basically difference, difference between murmurs and stridor Or did we have discussion about this before? Pernah kan dalam group year 5 semua sekali? I think we didn't have that. kan? Prime, betul. Kan? Huh? Ramai-ramai kan? Ha, what the fine. Lupa dah. Okay, fine. Next. So, mana ni nak buat ni? Macam mana nak buat ni? Macam mana nak keluar balik ni? Okay, so. So, the easiest test eh, to assess whether the baby has pulmonary hypertension of newborn, PPHN ke tak, is doing the, checking the pre-ductal and post-ductal situation. Okay. What do you need to know uh, to figure out the cause? So basically we need to look at the maternal history, if there's any risk factor, gestational age of the infant. So you know things like, for example, maternal history ni, contohnya macam uh, GDM, diabetes mellitus, gestational diabetes mellitus. Gestational diabetes mellitus is a risk for, is a risk for RDS by itself. Because this high blood sugar is, 
is 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 the problem is it acts on the surfactant production. So, gestation diabetes mellitus is a problem is a cause for uh, is a risk for RDS in babies, surfactant deficiency in babies. Also, meconium aspiration, for example, meconium aspiration is a risk for meconium aspiration syndrome. Meconium, meconium stain amniotic fluid. A mother with meconium, there is a risk for meconium aspiration syndrome (MAS). Satu. Yang kedua juga, meconium is toxic to your surfactant. Meconium renders your surfactant inactivated. Meconium inactivates the surfactant. So that is why sometimes in children, in babies with severe meconium aspiration syndrome, for example, they may present almost like RDS punya features because surfactant is inactivated by the meconium. So sebab tu kadang-kadang kita boleh buat surfactant lavage. Huh? And then kita, kita, kita push surfactant inside into their alveolar. So this is something that we can do. So maternal history is very very important. Sama juga I've told you before, things like polyhydramnios. So mothers with polyhydramnios, there is a high risk that the child has esophageal atresia. So you need to do chest x-ray afterwards. A mother with oligohydramnios. Oligohydramnios is associated with apa? I, I, I've said before. Oligohydramnios is associated with pulmonary hypoplasia. Pulmonary hypoplasia. Yes, because your lung won't develop well. Ini satu study eh, when I was one when I was in UK, one of the papers that I I, I helped to publish. It's a study about fito. So fito is uh, what is fito? Fito ni what happens is Okay, if you compare dengan, if you tengok Malaysia eh, you, you pernah tengok tak babies with congenital deformity hernia? Pernah tengok? Kita tak banyak, kita tak banyak case lagi lah. So in Malaysia, congenital deformity hernia ni biasanya diagnose post postnatal, lepas lepas deliver. Tapi in countries like UK, even in India, most, more than 90% are diagnosed antenatal. So antenatal they diagnose, oh this ada congenital deformity hernia. So what happens is, so the idea, so congenital deformity hernia is associated with pulmonary um, hypoplasia. Sebab lung dia tak develop well, lepas tu uh, the other side of the lung is pushed by the by the by the by the bowel apa semua. So dia tak develop well sebab compression effect. So the idea is, bila dia diagnose children yang ada moderate to severe CDH in utero, eh, apa dia buat within the first trimester, eh, mana uh, within probably 10 weeks of gestation macam tu dia akan buat through 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 dia macam amniocentesis maknanya through mother punya tummy tu dia intubate dia letak balloon dekat trachea trachea baby baby tu dalam perut dia letak balloon dekat trachea of the of the fetus so balloon so what happen bila ada balloon tu balloon tu akan maintainkan fluid dalam lung dia akan push increasekan pressure dalam fluid tissue dalam lung ni akan sentiasa produce fluid. Tapi bila dia letak obstruction kat situ, fluid tu akan banyak increase pressure, more extension, so dia akan promote development of the lung. So reduce risk of pulmonary hypoplasia. So that that is the study yeah. and then we see that actually this uh, balloon uh, fito balloon ni is actually quite useful lah. And less risk of pulmonary hypoplasia. So boleh boleh jadi kita kena tahu gestational age. Obviously preterm baby there is higher risk for uh, uh, RDS dan sebagainya amniotic fluid color odor volume so kalau amniotic fluid tu is uh, foul smelling what do you think foul smelling like what congenital amniotic congenital amniotic penyakit mak lah penyakit baby will be congenital pneumonia eh we can get pneumonia. Foul smelling like what? You need to always treat the baby. Eh? The baby may be become sepsis, septic, the baby may have congenital pneumonia. So color of the amniotic fluid, odor of the color ni sometimes it may be bloody. Eh? So kalau amniotic fluid dia bloody, so you know that probably the child have anemia dan sebagainya. Eh? And then uh, odor uh, and then volume of the amniotic fluid, oligo, polyhydramnios, those have risk associated. Intrapartum mystery, of course you need to know kalau ada maternal pyrexia, mother tu ada fever, even mother ada dengue, mother ada, uh, I've seen, I've seen varicella encephalitis in newborn, eh? congenital, congenital varicella. 
Big B tu dapat HIE sebab congenital variation lah. So chicken pox is a problem. So chicken pox, baby if mother have mother is actually having chicken pox, it can spread to the to the baby in utero and also after delivery. So COVID uh, and other diseases as well. So we need to know the intrapartum history. Clinical presentation of the baby and assessment at birth, you can know, and then chest X-ray as well. We, we've seen the several chest X-ray and then the lab evaluations, which we'll see. Lah. Okay, and then <coughs> how, how do they present respiratory assessment? Of course, respiratory rate. What is the normal respiratory rate of what is your respiratory rate? Normal? 16 to 20. How, how about how about respiratory rate for newborn? Newborn more than 50. 50. Huh? More than 100? 50. Huh? 50. 50. Respiratory. Newborn respiratory rate is usually 40 to, 40 to 60. So up to 60. 60 is the cut off point. So 60 is the cut off point. So uh, they may breathe 60 breath uh, per minute. So this is for newborn. So anything more than 60, so probably there is respiratory distress. Eh? And then quality as well, quality of the breathing. Is it shallow breathing? Is it deep, deep breathing with deep recessions? Shallow breathing, meaning there's some respiratory, respiratory depression, for example. Uh, the baby may be premature, so sometimes they may be shallow breathing. So these are all signs of respiratory distress. Nasal flaring, eh? kemangkan cok hidung. Eh? So nasal flaring is also a good sign of respiratory stress. Grunting, as we've shown before, bunyi itu. <coughs> the child trying to increase the intrathoracic pressure untuk open up the lung, kurangkan fluid dalam lung sebab bila dia increase intrathoracic pressure tu, dia akan push uh, fluid into the interstitium and goes into the uh, lymphatics. Eh? And then that, this is grunting and then retraction, chest retraction and then breast sound. You may hear consolidation, uh, you may hear crepitation, crackles and things. And also kalau pneumothorax, you can, you can, uh, percussion may be dull on percussion, tapi newborn is quite difficult lah for you to do percussion. Eh? Obviously you cannot do vocal, vocal resonant, uh, but you can appreciate vocal parameter sometimes in newborn even kalau ada pneumothorax. <coughs> And then the color of the baby, they may be pink, dusky, pale, mottled skin. And then you look at the heart rate. You know if the baby is tachypneic, the heart rate is usually increased as well. You can look at the pulses, distal versus central <coughs> uh, pulses. And then perfusion, you look at perfusion. Uh, clinical presentation. Okay. Sometimes children with, uh, whether there's any uh, syndromic features, eh? Uh, flat nasal bridge, simian, simian crease, uh, single palmar crease, uh, uh, recessed chin, low set ears. So sometimes these are features of Down syndrome. Eh? Down syndrome is also associated with PPHN. Down syndrome is associated with PPHN. Uh, and then uh, are there any other abnormalities, gastroscasis, perforated anus. So sometimes these all have, uh, uh, they are associated with uh, lung problems as well. Whether there is hypotonia or hypertonia as well. So, and then uh, things like, have you heard of ondine curse? So, there is a disease. Eh? The, uh, disease is about uh, central hypoventilation syndrome. Central hypoventilation syndrome ni is, a, is a neurological problem where the child will hypoventilate. The breathing will be short and shallow and then become apneic. So this is high central hypoventilation syndrome or ondine curse. O-N-D-I-N-E, curse. C-U-R-S-E, ondine curse. Uh, so sometimes they may, be, they may have hypotonia as well. So hypotonia, central hypotonia is associated with letting go Malaysia. So the child may have problem with the airway as well. So Respiratory distress is not just about the lungs, it may also be because of the upper airway. Kan? So, bila upper airway obstruction, dia akan jadi distress juga lah, contohnya laryngomalacia. Sama ada proper laryngomalacia or because of 
central hypotonia down syndrome for example neck control dia very weak bukan setakat neck maknanya central tone dia is low bila central tone dia low dia punya epiglottis dia akan close dia punya vocal cord and causing respiratory distress kalau macam chin small chin chin dia kecil kan uh, dia pun boleh obstruct airway juga apa contoh yang ada very small chin ni Uh, the George, the George syndrome. The George syndrome. Micro, micro nadia. Micro, ya, 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 micro nadia lagi. Micro. Oh, orang. Ah? Uh, I, I forgot the term. Uh. Allow down syndrome. Oh, down syndrome ada tak? Ada? Because dia macam. Down syndrome pun boleh ada micro nadia. Down syndrome bu boleh ada central pertama, boleh ada micro nadia. Dia boleh ada. Uh, uh, glossop, glossoptosis eh? Dia ada glossoptosis apa semua uh, Makroglossia Pierre Robin Pierre Robin sequence Pierre Robin sequence Kenapa Pierre Robin? Pierre tu nama French ni name lah Pierre P-I-E-R-R-E -R -R -E, And then dash Lepas tu seorang lagi doktor nama Robin ni eh? Orang panggil Pierre Robin lah Pierre Robin sequence So Pierre Robin sequence When the child has micrognetia Glossoptosis Uh, pure robin sequence ni is very difficult sebab nak intubate dia very difficult very difficult sebab dia punya airway dia very very small nak intubate very difficult I've seen very severe uh, severe pure robin uh, and then all these are the problems let's see okay if you do x-ray obviously you need to look at all the structures the ribs, vertebra, liver, stomach, intestine and all not lungs you need to look at the lung volume pulmonary hypoplasia usually the lung volume will reduce they are the bell shaped heart and yeah. uh, lung expansion so kalau mas rds sometimes you may see uh, the uh, the lung will be hyperinflated give me one second eh? hello Okay, alright. So X-ray, you need to look at all these things as I mentioned before. Uh, lab values, you look at full blood count. Kenapa nak tengok full blood count? Sebab kalau congenital infection, you can see uh, WBC to be raised lah. Atau WBC will be very very low. CRP ya, eh? CRP is another good parameter as well. CRP is an inflammatory marker. Bila ada infection, there will be inflammation. Bila ada inflammation, CRP will rise. Bukan setakat itu, MAS also can cause CRP to be rise, eh? electrolyze and what not. Uh, okay, we've seen this, we've discussed about this. TTN, as mentioned before, this is the commonest diagnosis of respiratory distress in the newborn. So usually, uh, uh, penama transient tachypnea of newborn is because of the ineffective clearance of amniotic fluid from the lung with delivery, uh, usually within 4 hours saja. It shouldn't go beyond. For hours. Kalau dia beyond 4 hours ni, most likely it's not transient tachypnea of newborn. Uh, more common with cesarean section, ada maternal analgesia dan sebagainya. And then uh, tachypnea usually 60 to up to 150, ada nasal flaring, all the signs of uh, respiratory distress. And then x-ray, you can see increased perihyla, punya streakiness, hyperinflation, fluid in the, fluid in the fissure. Because CVC normal sebab tak ada infection lah. It is just a transient punya problem. Uh, X-ray before, yup, surfactant deficiency or highline membrane disease mostly associated with premature, premature infant. Eh. So problem is decrease surfactant production. Because why? Sebab surfactant tak sempat nak produce lagi. Kan? So decrease surfactant production. And then history usually is premature baby. Uh, mother with uh, diabetes uh, and what not and then all this may also cause with uh, RDS problem as well. Uh, they may present with uh, features of respiratory distress. Uh, X-ray we can see the reticulogranular pattern or ground glass appearance as we've discussed before. We can some air bronchogram. They may be bell shaped as well. 
you can see some air leak uh, macam gemuk tapi small small gemuk cystic changes or PIE changes and then you can see atelectasis lots of hard border this will become white and then white out uh, very severe punya RDS example of RDS we've seen two two better x-ray before and then what else lab result treatment is basically we may give surfactant eh? so surfactant ni ada issue juga surfactant so about, what do you know about surfactant? How many types of surfactant kita ada? There are two types of surfactant. Bovine and porcine. Dia ada satu lagi, dia ada synthetic punya lah eh. Tapi synthetic punya it's not as good as bovine or porcine punya. So the issue is porcine kan. So kalau kita tengok dekat contoh dekat few hospital, dia guna Cerventa. Cerventa is Porectin Alpha which is porcine punya base. Company brand ni nama Cerventa. So Cerventa is Porectin Alpha. It's a very good drug. It's a very very good drug. Tapi isunya adalah dia porcine. Uh, tapi dia ada alternate dia macam kita kat, kat, kat UIA kita guna kita guna Calfactin. Kita guna uh, Infaserve. So Infaserve, HDA pun dah start guna Infaserve. So Infaserve is a Calfactin. So uh, surfactant from calf daripada lembu. Uh, tapi is it halal? Halal ke? Istihalah tu ada. Istihalah. Ha. Ha? Istihalah. So nak kata halal, satu isunya adalah beza dia dengan uh, dengan porectin is just different animal but they are not bukan sembelih kan? Dia tidak mengalami proses sembelihan itu. So dia bukan satu benda yang kita kata halal. Tapi kita kena ingat dia ada beberapa konsep lah. Satunya uh, kawahid fikiyah yang kita guna. First adalah Dorurah to be hul mahzurah. Dorurah situation where there is dorurah, permis certain things there are even haram. So dorurah to be hul mahzurah. But we need to remember, dorurah tu tu kadar bi kadariha. Dorurah tu kebenaran disebabkan dorurah itu dia ada limitation. The limitation is with the dia ada kadar dia based on the based on the uh, based on the darurah itself. Sebab itu you tak boleh bagi surfactant to everyone. All babies kita bagi surfactant. Tak boleh. Sebab darurah tu kadar bi kadariha. Ah uh, tu first concept. Second ni is you go to istihalah. So istihalah is when the product is changed from the nation uh, from the initial punya ni dia dah change. Tapi for surfactant it doesn't change because it is still surfactant. So istihalah is not actually used. You boleh guna juga konsep uh, istihlak. Istihlak ni contohnya macam uh, dua kulah kan. So najis masuk dalam air yang dua kulah dia jadi bersih. Tapi sama juga surfactant punya isu dia tak, dia tak terpakai sebab it is still, it is still there. Uh, but what we can do is look at that ad-darurah to be hul mahzurah. And ad-darurah to uh, Ad-darurah to be hul, to be hul mahzurah. So this is the concept that we need to know. Mechanical aspiration syndrome. So mostly found in uh, post day infants more than 40 weeks. Sebab apa? Sebab bila, kenapa baby pass meconium? Is it normal for a baby to pass meconium? Distress. And also maturation of gut. Okay, they, they, they pass meconium in utero because they are distress, they are stressed. Bila dia stress, dia pass meconium. So sama ada because of their post date, there are some element of uh, placental insufficiency, uh, they, they are hypoxic. So when they are hypoxic, when they are stressed, they, they pass meconium. Okay, kita baru separuh ni. Banyaknya mungkin aku cerita ni. So next is, so you need to know the history, prenatal care of the mother, uh, respiratory assessment as well, as usual. So X-ray, as mentioned before, uh, there may be increased epidemiometer, hyperinflation. You can see atelectasis, you can see motorized, you can see air trappings, uh, air trappings, air bronchogram. Uh, so many air trappings, blah 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 blah. See, these are all air trappings. And then congenital uh, pneumonia, sepsis as well. So congenital pneumonia, intrapartum pneumonia, postnatal pneumonia, most often seen in mothers with chorioamnionitis, prematurity because premature maybe they are. They are, they are immunodeficient. Kenapa dia immunodeficient? Sebab your 
immunoglobulin starts to cross the placenta from 20 weeks onward. And so before that, immunoglobulin from mother doesn't cross placenta. So baby won't have enough, enough protection. So you need to get thorough history. Okay, causes as mentioned before, assessment as this, x-ray, you can see patchy consolidation, you can see some diffuse granular pattern, you can see strickiness, you can see consolidation punya pattern lah eh. Uh, these are some x-rays. Alex, no more thorax, so you need to know as well. Uh, so this is another x-ray of a no more thorax. So if you do lateral decubitus, you can see this is the lung field, this is the, this hyperlucent area is where your pneumothorax is. Uh, this is no more pericardium. Eh? So air is in the pericardium. So this is another problem. You need to drain this. So it will compress the, compress the heart. Okay, and then you may, other, other things are such as congenital, uh, congenital heart disease, diaphragmatic hernia as mentioned before, CCAM, tracheal abnormalities, severe atresia pulmonary, hypoplasia, let us see, congenital heart disease, uh, so we're not going to go in that. Uh, have so CDH is this is where your the bowel goes into the into the thorax. So because there's defect there in the diaphragm, so bowel content goes inside the thorax and cause compression, cause lots of problems. CCAM is where you have cystic changes. Uh, so this is CDH ada CCAM tak? CCAM is basically cystic, cystic changes and cystic adenomatous changes in the lungs. Uh, PPHN we've discussed. So this is the uh, high, uh, low, ultra low resistance circulation in the placenta. Okay. Okay lah, I think that's all lah. Oh, so this is cystic hygroma. This is cystic hygroma. This is one of the, from your branchial, branchial formation. Eh? not brachial, branchial formation. So the cysts form from there and usually quite big. I've seen very big cystic hygroma. So the problem with cystic hygroma is it may cause compression to your, to your, to the, to the trachea, to the, to the trachea. So this is cystic hygroma. This is among uh, congenital malformation. Uh, Tracheocephalian fistula, this is the H-type. This is the one I've told you before. This is H-type. Sometimes kita boleh miss H type. Ni. This is uh, tracheoesophageal fistula with esophageal atresia. Esophageal atresia, tracheoesophageal fistula. So ni yang macam tadi tu. Masuk rice tube, rice tube pusing kat sini. Tapi dekat stomach dia ada air sebab ada connection between trachea and distal part of the esophagus. Uh, other airway abnormalities, you may have patients with subglottic stenosis, uh, webs, atresia, tumors, and things. All this can cause a vascular ring. Eh? But what is vascular ring? So vascular ring is, you know, your your pulmonary vein. There are empat kan? kan? So sometimes this vein, or even your aorta, can can go, can 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 go round your trachea. So sepatutnya dia duduk duduk depan ke belakang. Sepatutnya duduk depan trachea kan? Sometimes they may go round, they may form a ring on your trachea. So bila they form a ring on your trachea, it compresses your trachea as well and cause, cause uh, respiratory distress. You may have stridor because of vascular ring. Sebab tu kalau ada stridor, you kena buat echo lah. Just like make sure that you don't have any vascular ring. Okay, I think that's all. Okay. I think that's all. I, I'm going to give you this uh, slides. You can read lah. Eh? Mm -hmm. hmm. Any question? Doctor, I would like to ask. Yep. Uh, regarding the bed set that you mentioned just now for PPHN, uh, we take yep. the oxygen saturation from the preductor and postductor. So yep. the preductor one, we take it from the radial, radial artery. Okay. Uh, no, no. Bila you buat SPO2, where, mm -hmm. where do you check the SPO2? So, so SPO2, uh -huh. dia bukan dia bukan SAO2, dia SPO2. So you check the 
cuteness lah Maksudnya you check dekat hmm. finger kan You check macam uh, pulse biasa So you are checking the capillary punya perfusion kan SPO2 hmm. you are checking the color of the capillary Basically, basically capillary, you looking at capillary You are not looking at artery hmm. You are not looking at Sebab tu dia bukan SAO2 Dia bukan SVO2, dia SPO2 Pulse hmm. capillary, so you are looking at the color Color of the uh, capillary So you put at fingers lah, fingers In newborn babies, dia punya bone dia tak 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 besar Dia punya skin pun tak tebal, so you can even do at the wrist So you letak monitor tu dekat wrist You still can read, you letak kat jari So just pre-ductal is on the right Post-ductal is on the left and other part of the body Sometimes you punya right side ni tak boleh buat ke apa, you boleh buat dekat ear lobe ni You boleh letak probe dekat ear lobe So ear lobe is still pre-ductal lah uh, Sebab goes before the ductus arteriosus. Okay. Any other questions? Doctor, I have a question. Yep. Uh, first and foremost, with regards to uh, respiratory distress syndrome, yep. uh, my question would be that uh, in the textbook mentioned that there is a role of um, permissive hypercapnia during the first two weeks in order to prevent from BPD, uh, bronchopulmonary dysplasia. Um, do we regularly do that in our setting, doctor? Yes, yes. Why? Because the, uh, you guys got the uh, connection, uh, the, the, we did some session about ventilatory setting with Dr. Ismail. If, if you guys have that, that's a bit high level. Lah. But we discussed several things. Among the things we discussed about how oxygen is a free radical. So oxygen is a free radical, oxygen itself can cause can cause bronchopulmonary dysplasia, chronic lung disease because of high oxygen. So when you look at when you look at when you look at uh, premature uh, when you look at newborn babies, especially premature babies, what do you think is the level of the PaO2 and PVO2 in them, and the P uh, and the PaCO2 in them in, in newborn babies? PaO2 and PaCO2 in newborn babies, especially premature babies. Will they be higher or lower? Which one will be higher? Okay, fine. I, I, I rephrase my question. If you if you assess in adult, Aklan, janganlah, janganlah, unmute. Janganlah, mute, mute, unmute dulu. Okay, so I, if, in adults, in adults, if you do if you do your, your PAO2, what will be your normal PAO2? Normal PAO2, hmm. 80 to 100. Okay, around 80, so you expect 80. PO2, PCO2, PACO2 mm, Should be less than 40, 35 to 45 35 to 45, that is normal in adults Okay How, how about your venous? Will your, in your venous circulation Your PVO2 Will it be high? It should be lower than the arterial one Okay yeah. how, how low? Um, not sure <laughs> So usually up to 60 lah, lebih kurang 40 to 60 PVCO2 PVO2 How about your CO2? Venus PVCO2 50? Higher, so, higher So obviously your CO2 will be higher lah in Venus kan? So it will be higher, it will be up to 60 60 uh, like that in PVCO2 as well Okay, so next question is Where does a, where does a fetus Dia dapat blood daripada mana? Dia dapat oksigen, dapat vein, dia dapat carbon dioxide, dia, dia, dia gases dia dapat daripada mana? Umbilical vein Kita dapat then... daripada placenta Center. Kan? Dapat daripada placenta Placenta dapat daripada mana? Daripada... Mat. So there's a mixture, there's a mixture from maternal punya venous circulation and arterial circulation But mainly is from the maternal venous circulation so, the amount of oxygen that a, a, a baby gets inside the uterus is low because it's relatively sama dengan mother punya venous punya circulation. Faham? Maknanya, the oxygen level yang baby tu dapat masa in utero is low daripada mother. Dia punya carbon dioxide level yang baby dapat in utero is high. Sebab dia dapat daripada mother almost venous punya circulation. Ha. So, 
Sebab itu, sebab itu that is why new in fetus and also in newborn, dia ada fetal hemoglobin, HBF ni. So HBF has higher oxygen. Affinity. Dia higher ke lower? Higher affinity. The lower oxygen affinity, dia senang lagi nak release. Or is it I'm also confused. So basically HBF helps helps for this baby because oxygen dia low, so, ah, higher affinity, higher oxygen affinity. HBF has higher oxygen affinity. So oxygen level dia low, so dia nak capture more oxygen. Kan? So this is this is the this is the difference. So bila in in this newborn, especially premature babies, they are used to higher carbon dioxide level. So they don't actually need lots of oxygen and they are okay with higher level of uh, 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 and they are okay with higher levels of CO2 as compared to more term babies. So we usually accept, we accept permissive hypercapnia, permissive hypercarbia as long as there is no acidosis. If you do blood gas, as long as the pH is less, is more than 7.25 and that's okay. Okay, any other question? Okay, I think we should stop now because I have another meeting at 11 which I need to prepare a bit. Okay, I hope you guys get the general idea about uh, common respiratory diseases in newborn, uh, especially those that you need to know, TTN, congenital pneumonia, MAS, pneumothorax, RDS, uh, deformity hernia. So this, this, these are things that can come up and have come up several times in OSCE especially. It may come up in, it has come up in uh, PMP as well. So, uh, but you won't get it for clinical exam, obviously. So clinical exam, nothing about new needs, but you can get in theory exam. Okay, all right. Aku luka oleh Hazza Fasta Fulazal Hazim Lee. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let's end our session with Tasbikah Farah Rasulullah.